I'm Richard Cheshire, the Cheshire Catalyst. I've been a friend of the firm since 1994, the first club conference when I walked into a uh, really messed up registration that was trying to get a photo ID system going. I just stepped in, started handing out shits, sent people into the talks and said, come back later for registration, you need to go to the conference. Uh, and since then I've been a friend of the firm and um, they've offered me the lead off role of one of the tracks uh, for the past few months. I feel very honored for that. And I want to thank the committee uh, for that. Now, to give you just a moment, we've had some trouble uh, getting set up here. Uh, I need to go to the websites. Fundfriendly.com directory. H12. And then the index. Now, uh, if you care to follow along on your mobile phone web browser, please visit h12.mobi. H one two decimal M O B I. Mike Oscar Bravo India. I'm also a ham radio operator, and so the use of international kinetics is just second nature to me. Let me see. I'm going to open this file. Firefox, of course. My web browser of choice. So, 
before at the introduction, I've already thanked the speaker committee for including me again in the hope. Uh, I need to a few flight levels. Control uh, shift plus sign to bring the word and read the state. Well, the lights are just playing me, I apologize. By the way, I work best with questions. Feel free to throw questions at me at any time during the talk. Um, Web pages versus that, we just discussed that. What is a TLD, a top level domain? In this case, the dot will be portion of the web address. I like to say these days that a dot mobi is the dot com for mobile phone browsers. And just not for mobile devices, right? Mobile phones and tablets. They both fall into that. Of course, you can bring it up on a laptop as well as we're doing here. And in fact, it's a little large. So we're going to reduce the size of the screen a bit, just to make it easier to maneuver. And you'll see that as I slide back and forth, that the text will slide around so to make it more legible within the mobile device. Uh, that's, again, the beauty of using a web page and not an app. Um, now, old phones are not necessarily obsolete phones. If a phone has a web browser, it should be able to read your web page. Now, uh, what can phone browsers do that desktop and laptop browsers cannot do? One of the things is a tell tag. Uh, now, you know the mail to tag, mail to colon uh, example at uh, <coughs> dot, dot com. And that will take you to your uh, email package, uh, Outlook or Yahoo Mail or uh, Gmail, depending on how you set up your web browser. And you can send an email just by clicking on the address in a web page. Well, the tell allows you to uh, find a telephone number with the same kind of format, T-E-L colon and the number. In this case, I've got the phone number 202-762-1401. If you click on this with a, a desktop browser, it'll probably say, I don't know how to deal with it, unless you've installed Skype on your computer. Skype has gone in and has updated the web browser so that when it sees a telephone number, it will try and bring up Skype. Uh, I think my article in 2600 may have helped them figure out how to do that a couple of years ago. Uh, so hopefully I was the one that pushed that snowball down the hill. Um, when you uh, click on these, uh, it will go to your, well, it may ask you which application in your phone do you want. Uh, just tap on phone, send, and up will come Durward Kirby the former announcer of uh, Gary Moore's I've Got a Secret Television Program, who was recorded by the U.S. Naval Observatory and is the voice of, of the Naval Observatory's master clock. He will read you the time in Eastern Daylight or Eastern Standard, depending on time of year, and in Universal Time Coordinated. Uh, UTC is uh, an abbreviation that is inconvenient in both English and French, and so it was agreed upon. Um, also, I tend to like the international date format of year, month, day, hour, minute, second, because not only is that human readable, it's computer sortable. It's a nerd thing, I understand that. I'm, not only that, I'm a licensed nerd. Ham radio license N4SCY. Uh, by the way, there will be a uh, ham examination on Sunday afternoon. At noon today, uh, they're uh, giving you tips on how to get uh, past the exam up on the sixth floor. I think it's the Budapest room, but you can find out. And uh, I highly suggest uh, taking the test, getting a ham license, and getting on the air. Much fun. Lots of interesting people, too. Um, now, when I set up uh, various menus, for example, uh, at the bottom of most pages, let's see, like at the bottom of the uh, schedule page where we have one, two, and three, there is a component in the H reference uh, for um, the access key. Access key equals, quote, one. And so uh, when people tap the one on their touchstone dial, uh, or if you hit uh, Control-Alt-1 on your desktop keyboard, it will then trip that access key and send you to that uh, web, web page. Um, so the access key allows somebody with a mobile phone browser who's looking at a website to choose menu choices. Uh, if you visit yn61.mobi, yn is for Yuri's night, 1961 is the year Yuri Gagarin uh, achieved orbit as the first human in space, 
And um, if you go through that menu tree, um, you hit, I think it's four for North America, within that three for United States. And then I had a problem. 50 states plus assorted territories, how could I get that down to a zero to nine menu choice so you could just push a button on the touchtone dial on an older feature phone? Hmm, let me see. The question becomes, what is the first digit of your zip code? And that then becomes a zero to nine menu choice. The second page of that is the states or territories within uh, that group. Uh, for the number one, you'd have uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New York. For the number two, you'd have uh, DC, Virginia, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that was one easy way of dealing with that problem. Uh, let me see now. Where are we? Oops. So that's the tell tag. Oh, the text tag. Uh, if you want to text Cheshire, uh, send me a text message while you're on this page, you can click on that. It, will, uh, it should ask you which app again, depending on how many apps you have for text messaging, and just choose one. It will drop my telephone number into the send area and uh, ask for your email address so I can email you back when you send me the text message. Um, you've got uh, the body component, I believe there's the subject component, and uh, these are ways of being able to put these sorts of things into a web page that somebody coming in on their mobile phone will be able to access and interact with your page and with you. Now, fave icon is the next little subject I'd like to cover. Um, when you bring up a web page these days, you'll find that there's a tab at the top of the page. And uh, um, besides the title of the page, very important because when you bookmark a page, that title becomes the title of the bookmark. It will usually also grab whatever is your fave icon, F-A-V-I-C-O-N dot I-C-O. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the best way to prepare a fave icon is to take your favorite image, bring it up in paint, and save it as a bitmap. Uh, it helps if it's a, sh a square shape. And um, let's see, no, because we're not on the net, I can't bring up my usual display that I plan to bring up. But um, at uh, icons2go.us, you'll find my page for coming up with icons for myself and for other people. And it's a great way of coming up with icons yourself. Uh, just like I said, bring them into paint, save them as a bitmap, and then re rename the .bmp file as .ico. Just FTP that image into the main index directory of your website, you're done. The web browsers then take over, and when they bring in a web page, they look for a fave icon. If they find it, that little image goes up in the tab. And when you bookmark the page, uh, th that goes in with the bookmark to identify the bookmark, if you tell your device, save this web page to my main screen, that icon becomes the icon on the main screen so you can find it among all the other icons you have on your main screen. Um, if you've uh, visited the h12.mobi and uh, hit the three dots in the upper right hand corner and find the uh, save to my home page, you'll find a small icon of the Hope logo that will now appear on the home page of your phone. So you'll be able to find the schedule very easily. Um, now, in uh, Brevard County, Florida, where I'm at, I got roped into webmastering a page called museumsofbrevard.org. And um, I went out and found a little uh, icon for a museum. That becomes an icon for that. Uh, copa.mobi, if you look at that website, that was, well, I have to explain about copa.mobi. I am a soccer fan. When I was stationed in Germany with the U.S. Army, I went to a soccer match while I was there. Standing 90 minutes in the southwest uh, corner of the Kaiserslautern Football Club Stadium with the rowdy crowd. I didn't know that they were called Vuvuzulas at the time, but they were there. Uh, I had to wait until the 2010 World Cup in South Africa to find out what they were called, but I remember them. But it was at that soccer match I realized soccer was the world's game. So in 1993, I lived near Orlando, Florida, they were looking for volunteers for this um, World Cup thing, and I'm thinking, what American is right mind is going to volunteer? 
wait a minute, I'm not in my right mind. Hello? So I go down to volunteer, and they say, what can you do, kid? Oh, well, I'm a bit of a computer hacker. Uh, EDS computing is running uh, all the, uh, the stuff for the World Cup. We've got computer people of the proverbial. What else can you do? Oh, well, I'm a ham radio operator. Have I got a job for you? I became the chief radio operator at the Citrus Bowl for the World Cup. Much fun. Uh, it's been lots of brownie points ever since, whenever I can mention that to uh, soccer fans from around the world. And um, since then, I've got, tried to keep my hand in by running websites with uh, the World Cup on it. Can't find advertisers for it, but uh, I keep trying. And uh, this year, copa.mobi is the web address I bought and will be the, my World Cup site for all the World Cups to come. Next year will be uh, World Cup, uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2019 France. And that will take over for, uh, on copa.mobi next year. If you know anybody who wants to advertise uh, and have their own branded World Cup site, just have them call me, dial 321 liftoff. Yes, that's my phone number. We'll get into that in a little bit. And um, from there, uh, the website, following every goal in the tournament, I would update the site with uh, those uh, scores. And I'm willing to do that for any World Cup. If you visit o-city.mobi, o-city dot mobi, you'll find a schedule for the Orlando City Soccer Club, my home team. And um, if you go to the About page, you'll find a disclaimer. Uh, this is a fan-generated website. It is not operated by FIFA, Major League Soccer, the National Women's Soccer League, uh, or uh, the Easter Bunny. And then under that, in slightly smaller print, uh, rumors regarding Santa Claus will be neither confirmed or denied. And if you click on the name Santa Claus there, up comes a picture of me in a Santa Claus costume with a little dog and the uh, logo of the pet supermarket in Titusville, Florida. So, uh, <laughs> other of the volunteer things I do. Um, let's see, spaceyideas.com is the web address I came up with after the Wall Street Journal wrote an article about my area code. Uh, yes, I have my own area code. It is 321, and it's mine. When they split 407 many years ago, I'm the guy that showed up at the Public Service Commission hearing, and I explained to them, Cape Canaveral, the countdown capital, shouldn't that get three, two, one? And by the way, here's the information from the North American Numbering Plan Administration showing it's available. So the way I look at it is, I asked for it, they approved it, doesn't that mean it's my area code? But I share. But I did save the best number for myself. Three, two, one, liftoff. So uh, if you uh, need me to help you with uh, coming up with a, a fave icon or coming up with a website for your soccer team or other sports teams schedule, uh, again, give me a call, 321 liftoff. I'd be happy to help. And um, you can take a look at how I've done museumsofbrevard.org, uh, which is available on uh, this uh, notes page here. Um, basically, I wish I could bring it up, it has the name and address of the museum and an image. And then the next line, they're swapped around, uh, name and address and then the image on the other side, and then they just alternate down the page. It's about the only thing I do uh, for graphics, considering. And then in between those two uh, frames, uh, excuse me, cells of the table, I've got the uh, location and any icons for uh, social media that they have, Twitter, Facebook, what have you, and uh, the map icon for what three words. Now, I would like to promote what3words.com. Their short address is w3w.co. If you bring that up, click on uh, uh, explore the map, and then click on the usual my location symbol, it will find you. It will come up with three simple words separated by dots that you can give to anyone else and they can then find where you're at by those three words. You can tap on the image there and uh, hit the share symbol and send it via text messaging or email or what have you. And so if you're both gonna be in Central Park, you just don't know where, the one person goes to w3w.co, go to the map, 
find, well, they'd find where you are, share that via text message, and then your friend can tap on the received uh, URL, which will then show them where in the park you are. And you can use uh, that to find yourself and uh, get together in strange locations like that. I highly recommend that. Um, let's see, contact icons, again, the, uh, uh, um, let me see if I can bring up my icons page, icons to go.us, which is the web address for that. Uh, just the images directly, I didn't uh, transport all of this over. Um, no, my apologies. Uh, I saved some simple icons for use on the page. Uh, that won't do it. Instagram logos, yeah, that was that there. W will be just uh, for the Wikipedia logo, for sending people off to those. Let's see what else I've got. No, I don't. Copa.mobi. Um, this was the main logo of the uh, World Cup, which was as if Fabergé had designed the World Cup trophy. And then uh, these are the, the list of 32 nations that were in this year's World Cup. Um, unfortunately, the flags are not coming up because it's set up to go to the net to grab the flags. The group letters, if you're familiar with the World Cup at all, the 32 nations are grouped into eight groups of four teams each. Each team plays the other um, three times. There's three matches per uh, group play in group A. Uh, let's see, slash groups. Slash A. Oh, okay, we'll not go through that now. But the entire page is formatted uh, completely for the uh, mobile phone web browser to be able to view. Uh, what you see as squares with the three letter codes for the countries should be showing you the flags of those countries. The three letters are actually in the alt of the image uh, tag. Uh, the numbers on the left hand side are the match numbers. The reason I have to use the match numbers is because down at the, the round of six, well, beyond the round of 16 in the quarterfinals, you'll see uh, W49 versus W50. The winner of match 49 plays the winner of match 50, which in this case was Uruguay versus France, and France won that one 2-0. Uh, so as long as I needed to have the match numbers so that you knew uh, which ones we were talking about, I put match numbers for, uh, alongside each and every uh, match. And what I did was if you click on the actual number, it will take you out to fifaworldcup.com uh, to that particular match so you could look up the details. But again, we're not on the net here, so we can't do that. But for those of you surfing at home, you can follow along on that. Oh, there's a couple of the flags, uh, Sweden and England. Um, I must have actually worked on this one for the editing and uh, put them into this particular version. Our archives include the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, the 2015 Women's World Cup, and the 2017 Confederation Cup. Now, before the Men's World Cup every four years, the year before that, uh, FIFA runs the Confederation Cup to test the stadiums so that the local organizing committee can figure out actually how to run a World Cup. Uh, let's see. I think this pretty much concludes my talk. And uh, do I have any other questions out there? Okay. What's that? Are there tags you should stay away from? You know, uh, you said you use tables, but are there other HTML codes that you should use for both sites? Well, um, most. Uh, HTML tags will work on phone browsers uh, because they're usually uh, stripped down versions of desktop browsers, so they know how to do most things. Uh, the thing is that some things didn't get translated from phones up to the desktop browsers, like the tel tag. 
Um, that's why uh, Skype had to go in and, and do something strange uh, once I showed them how. And um, but, uh, any questions on these, please feel free to drop me an email, cheshire at ph2.mobi. Uh, phone friendly is the website with PHs on both words. Um, and the short form is, for phone friendly is ph2.mobi. So coming up with shorter versions of your main domain name can be useful for people who come in from uh, uh, mobile phone websites uh, on their mobile phones. Um, also, it makes for a shorter email address. So uh, usually when I give out the address, it's with the .mobi rather than phonefriendly.com, which takes a lot to type out. Uh, let's see, I'm sure I would have remembered other things to bring up had I had the full website available. I apologize for that. So um, the HOPE overview, well, that, that's going out to the net as well. So let me see if I can drop back a few characters. About dot HTML. Or was it just HTM? Nope, not on this one. Did, didn't uh, edit this file on this machine, or on this uh, thumb drive. So, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'll be around for any questions you may still have after the talk. Thank you.